Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Raid Shadow Legends, and it is time to talk about the best gear sets to use when building your champions for Hydra Clan Boss. So if you've watched my videos, you probably got a good gist of what I tend to put people in. And uh, <laughs> there's a pattern, right? There's definitely a pattern. And there's just some combinations that work so well. And there's the thing is with it, some of it, you got to be careful, it might mess you up in other areas of the game. Like Reflex and Relentless, uh, if you're speed tuning something very specific. But for the most part, these sets are pretty great and they're going to help carry your champions in uh, at least most basic dungeons. They're going to make them better in Faction Wars. And sometimes you might even be able to use them in Clan Boss if you're... Well, let's just start off with the first example and see what I mean here. Relentless gear. So, okay, I don't use ninja for clan boss. This is not my clan boss relentless ninja by any means. But I know a lot of people use champions for like the bat eater, which I do, in relentless gear. And it also comes in handy for Hydra clan boss. So relentless gear itself has an 18% chance to give you an extra turn. Simple as that. Chances to go more often chances to do more damage. In Ninja's case, his best damage is really this A3 and, and activating those HP burns. So he is just a fun, fun champion to have around for some extra damage, especially lower levels of Hydra. HP burn is capped, as you, and so as you get higher, the damage value kind of goes down. But in low levels of Hydra, uh, HP burn is amazing for damage. And so Ninja can pump out some actual nice big hits with exploding the HP burn and have that in there as well. He's a really great candidate to have in Relentless Gear. Another one, actually there's a couple combinations I want to talk about for Relentless Gear now. Uh, I would say Geomancer is probably one of the strongest other candidates for that. Oops, mine's up. Oh, I have a couple of Geomancers. <laughs> this one is out of Relentless for sake of um, making sure I wasn't going too much and losing my buffs that were protecting me in Iron Twins. But this Geomancer normally has a Relentless boot on. And yeah, he is just solid. Um, having him be able to just hit again, even if it, this other skills aren't ready, and just place decreased accuracy and help keep that up 100% of the time, it's really helpful. If you have a little bit of resistance on some of your champions, this might be enough to make a big difference in getting slammed by poisons, provokes, weaken debuffs. Uh, it could really, really help. So having him be able to just even just do his A1 more often is really great. Plus, if you have something like the Cruelty Blessing on him, that's going to help to decrease the defense of each head faster. So that way everyone else can do more damage. Also, of course, the more often you go, the more often you're going to be able to reset the skills of these really, really valuable skills in Hydra. Now, the A3 is what it's all about. That affects his passive here. And he just pumps out so much damage because of the passive. But you need HP burns placed around for that to happen. And having Relentless Gear on him is a really good way to make that happen. Plus, if you're needing to do any buff stripping, if you're not able to keep block buffs up the whole time, uh, this skill is really handy to remove or steal some buffs as well. Uh, another person I always use well i should say always i have two versions of my ugo one is in reflex and one is in relentless uh, relentless ugo with refresh accessories is probably my favorite combo for her i might say that'd be my favorite combo for all of my hydra champions honestly if i could get like three refresh on everybody that would be the perfect world free three refresh on everybody and this mastery here for the support tree and boom, 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 like let them go more often. Oh, and when they go, their skill's ready again. So someone like Ugo that only has a conditional revive, or cleanse, like she she removes all heal reduction, but then only one more debuff. But if you've got like four poisons on you and some other stuff, you might really wish you had another cleanse coming around quicker. So having Relentless Gear on her is really, really helpful. Um, and then of course, block def uh, decreased defense and block buffs. Block buffs, she's the bad affinity for two of the heads, typically, like the starting rotation, two of the starting ones are the bad affinity. So if you miss the block buffs place, and she's able to go again and come back to it, 
that's going to be really helpful as well. Uh, you also can put uh, support champions like God Seeker to be able to revive more often, other people to heal more often, anyone that can do extra support in general. I mean, for the most part, Relentless Gear and Reflex Gear are going to be useful on almost all champions for Hydra. If you can get good stats, it's worth it. And when it comes to gear like this, even reflex gear, even if the gear is not perfect, even if you're losing a little bit of damage, it's often worth it because especially on someone who's like a damage dealer, coming back to those skills that can allow you to smash more often is going to help you do more damage, period. So if you lose a little bit of damage because you want to put on one of these sets, I do think it's worth it. That's why we're going to talk about the reflex set next. 40% chance to reduce the cooldown skill. We'll reduce a random skill cooldown by one turn. Uh, this is really helpful. It's, you know, like refresh accessories are kind of the same deal. You got the mastery as well, like I mentioned. Oops, which is not on this Ugo. This was my first Ugo that I used in other content. I need to get that Ugo in this mastery right here. It's really helpful. But for now, it's fine. You can tell I have three Ugos for good reason. I use all of them. Um... Refresh or Reflex Ugo, Refresh Accessories, still go for that if you can. You can see, for me, I just don't have um, fast enough banner. I have no speed on it, so I think I end up using a different banner when I do my faster Ugo for Nightmare Hydra. Uh, my slower Ugos, I'm able to use my other banner because it's I, I'm able to get the speeds elsewhere. And yeah, I think my Relentless Gear is a little slow as far as trying to get the right stat combination. So I ended up using reflex on my ugo for nightmare hydra but it's it's so it's it's debatable relentless or reflex which one is better both are going to give you amazing opportunities to come back to your skill reflex could be said to be better because you actually have a 40 percent chance versus an 18 percent chance for something to happen but that's why i say i really like relentless to be with refresh accessories you can get a little bit of both it's kind of fun but i as far as refresh uh reflex sorry it goes i always have a royal guard in it as well i have one i only have one reflex boot that i swap around to everybody it's quite sad as if i on my damage dealers at least so like if husk is going and i have him in reflex he's got the boot if it's royal guards turn up he's got the boot but it is what it is i know it gets expensive swapping gear but i'd rather have better gear and be able to give my best and easiest hydra keys less frustration with hydra is worth the gear swaps for me and as i go along i'm trying to do more and more and more of regearing for each champion where i only have to swap one or two pieces and not a whole set or none at all, ideally, right? So I'm working toward that, but right now I'm swapping a lot of gear. And Reflex is one of those sets that travels around between my Husks, my Royal Guards, my Geomancers, and my... Well, my one Ugo just keeps it all the time. But they are great examples of who should be in Reflex gear. It's just so, so helpful. Um, Reflex Relentless... I mean, Relentless, I probably should give a quick shout back to, like, if you have Nekmothar... He's insane for Relentless Gear. He's also insane for another set that we're going to talk about in a second. But I do want to call attention to one of our newer champions, Jamarsa. Uh, when it comes to a Reflex set, she pretty much is a Reflex set for your entire team. Redu whenever an ally uses an active skill, has a 20% chance of decreasing the cooldown of that skill by one turn. This is no cooldown when it's booked. So she's a half version of reflex gear, to be fair. But that helps the whole team. Imagine if, you're, if you don't have great reflex gear or you're lacking refresh accessories. She could be awesome to have on your team to help keep those skills cycling a little bit more often. Plus, she brings a nice revive here as well. It's, it's, eh, it's kind of like, I don't know, the rest of her kit doesn't really excite me without this besides just being a reviver but this might be able to make it worth it depending on your gear and who else you have on your team so that's something to consider now i mentioned nekmothar and i'm there is one set of gear i would say relentless gear or depending on how good your coverage is for provoking the head of decay i strongly suggest if you have a nekmothar to try him in oh my god where is it there we go in a taunting set. 
So taunting, 30% chance to place provoke debuff for one turn. This is another really strong set for Hydra because it allows you to keep the Head of Decay provoked in multiple manners, like not just straight up, like, okay, Coronar is a great example. He has a lot of counterattacks. He's got an AoE on the A1. But this Provoke is not good enough to do it on its own. It's not good enough. So putting him in a pro Provoke set, sometimes that lands, and then the next time the skill comes around, you don't need to use this skill, which is really helpful. If I can hold off another turn, and then wait, because of the Taunting set landed the Provoke, that's really helpful as well. It's also really great to put on people that I mean, there's not really many I can think of that you're going to put this on that don't need accuracy and have an AoE A1. But you don't need accuracy to land debuffs from sets. That's something really important to mention. Another fun thing to mention is that when it comes to this taunting set, it places over weak hits. So this is just a chance to land a debuff. And even if the poison cloud is up, you could still land the provoke on the head of decay, even if it has a poison cloud up buff on him. Uh, of course it can't land if you have block debuffs on the enemy, but it does land if you at least have poison cloud, so that can come in handy. It's a really, really good set. So I would definitely say Coronar, Nekmothar, hell, even Krisk with these AoE A1 type champions. I mean, I so this is the funny thing. I don't have a Krisk, and um, <laughs> he's just so good for Hydra. He makes, like, autoing possible, I swear. It's so, so nice. But he has an AoE A1 with decreased speed, which is amazing. And so him and a ta uh, taunting set could be really well great as well. Especially here with another AoE. Oh, and he provokes, too. So that, again, this is a provoke that goes to a three-turn cooldown, one-turn provoke. Not good enough to keep it up 100% of the time. But if you've got... If you've got a taunting set on, it might help you do so. Uh, Nekmothar, I say, is so helpful because not only does he have an AoE A1, but he also goes back to his skills so often. He's got an AoE A2, so boom, AoE, AoE, multiple chances to land that taunting uh, provoke. And then this one, he increases everyone's speed and then takes an extra turn. So every time Nekmothar goes, he's doing an AoE every time. It's such a good kit for Hydra. And then fills his turn meter every time the debuff removed, transferred, or expires. So he's going so often, which makes him fun for Relentless Gear to pump out. Like if, it, if you have a Smite Brimstone Blessing on him and you have him in Relentless Gear, he's just going to go so often that that should stay up on people pretty damn well and give you some insane damage for Hydra. But Another option, really, I think, to strongly consider, unless you have two other provoke options in your kit, uh, or in your comp, uh, is to have him in a taunting set. It's going to help keep it up really, really well. So well that you probably won't even need... Uh, you could probably use a secondary provoker and him versus trying to have a strong provoker and just have it as a backup. So that's just something else to consider. Now, when we first started, I was on another set that's really good for Hydra here. I have the Guardian set up. So Guardian is really, really nice. Well, uh, it's for, for a tanky champion to help absorb some damage. So it absorbs 10% of the damage dealt to all ally champions, heals by 10% every turn. So it takes extra damage and then heals himself. So it kind of makes up for the fact that they're taking more damage than the rest of your team. But in some cases, there's some unique people like Mother Sybil here who can actually benefit by maybe purposefully being a little squishy and letting her die. So she's going to take more damage. She's going to have, it's going to be a little hard to keep her alive unless she has some crazy HP on her and maybe defense as well. But the good thing is, oh, where is it? When fully heals the ally with the lowest HP whenever this champion is killed. So boom, you got an instant heal. And then when you revive her again, heals all allies by 20% of their max HPs and fills their turn meters by 15% whenever this champion is revived. So if the Head of Wrath comes in, smashes, kills your mother Sybil, and you're like, oh crap. As long as you got a reviver on deck ready to go, 
This is going to be really helpful. Plus, she's got Revive and de on Death in her kit as well, so that can kind of cover that base there, too. But if you can revive Mother Sybil and it boosts everyone's turn meters and heals, that's a really helpful sk skill, too. Like, something where you're not so mad if she actually dies because of taking this extra damage. Uh, I should also note that I would say Guardian should be in most Brutal and Nightmare Hydra teams. When, especially, well, I would say when the Head of Wrath is around. It's around all the time. Welcome to the high levels of Hydra, right? It's always around. It doesn't matter what the starting rotation is, honestly. Uh, but when you don't have decrease attack debuff, like as an AoE, like our new friend Uko, Mighty Uko coming out, um, if you can't put have someone like that in your roster that puts an AoE decrease attack on all, all, all heads, all enemies, uh, then having a guardian set as backup is for damage mitigation is really, really helpful. Uh, I probably should also make note of some other important gear like that you're going to see on almost all champions. Um, I'm using Lady Kimmy for Hydra and for Iron Twins. She's in full perception. For I have her at Iron Twins level stats there. Uh, that also doesn't hurt her for sake of Arena anyway. I had her in full perception, even higher accuracy for Arena, but I wanted to make her more survivable, and I switched her for Hydra. But perception gear is just accuracy gear plus speed. It's a better version of accuracy gear. And when it comes to doing Hydra, you're going to have to get some high levels of accuracy and resistance and speed and everything if you want to compete in the higher levels so it's just it's really hard to get those stats and having good gear is important for doing so and one of my favorite combination of gear which is something people are probably used to throw away all the time which i thought was insane um resistance chest in an accuracy perception set it's such a good combo for people like my scholar Vargal here, who is a mischief target. You want, if you want to get the kind of accuracy needed to actually land the debuffs and have the good enough resistance, honestly, these are a little low. These are a little low. It's a little bit risky. Uh, but he hasn't, he hasn't had trouble. I've been okay. But I would probably get this accuracy up a little closer to 400. To be fair, I might have swapped a, a glove or something on him recently. So I might need to fix him before I do Nightmare Hydra. But you really need to get high levels of both stats and having a resistance perception chest is just something you want around. Or when you're looking for your pieces here, you're looking for speed, resistance, accuracy on this perception gear. A perfect piece for some of these mischief tanks would probably be speed, accuracy, resistance, and HP percent. You know, just having for some, most of them. Having that sort of stat is really, really helpful. Now, there's a couple things I want to nod to as well. Let me find my champion. Who the hell has my interesting mix set here? Actually, you know what? Lord Champfort does, I think. Where are you, Lord Champfort? I used to use him in Hydra. Oh, he's not here. Or did I pass him? There he is. Oh, he doesn't have it anymore. Hold on. Here we go. I knew I put it on someone. I want to make a quick nod when we're talking about gear sets to the new sets that we all know as PvP sets. Stone skin and protection gear. But they're more than that. They're actually quite useful in PvE as well. Especially if you're just looking to boost a little bit of stats and you've got some solid pieces of gear. Maybe they don't quite fit your arena team, but maybe the stats are perfect for someone you need for Hydra. So look at this. Stone skin gives you one piece's 8% extra HP. So that's a little bonus if you're just working with a mixed set, like you've got the perfect item and it's just not in a set you need, but you don't want to be you don't want to have you don't want it to be wasted, right? You want to have some good stats. This can help give you a bonus stat. And then we've got 40 resistance with two pieces. So as a two-piece set, stone skin is 8 res 8 HP, 8% HP and 40 resistance. Really really helpful. And then um protection gear, let me see where's my Manaya? She's in some protection gear. So protection gear, same thing. If you're working with some mixed sets and you're maybe you didn't get the most ideal pieces in protection, but you've got the most perfect damage dealer glove. And you're like, but I can't throw it away. The stats are perfect. It's just not the right set. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. You, those are the kind of things you want to save every once in a while because sometimes th everything just lines up in a weird way. If you're looking to build some resistance on your team, 
You got a great protection piece. It's 20 resistance just added as another, like another substat, which is one piece. 15% HP with two pieces. So this is quite nice here, just to give a little bit of extra stats, depending on what you need. So that's something to consider as well when you're looking at your gear. And especially if you, you're looking at one or two piece, just extra sets to fill in for some missing stats, you might want to take a look at protection and stone skin if HP and resistance are what you need. And again, last but not least, let's talk about something even more important in some cases. As I click and it's not on that one, of course, go figure. Refresh accessories. So refresh accessories are, again, I mentioned them a quite a few times early in this video. They are just like uh, reflex gear in a sense, but it's a smaller chance, 5% chance, but they stack. So you can get up to 15% chance increase. You add that on with relentless gear, with reflex gear, with masteries, you're going to have a lot of chances to be using those skills more often. So that's the kind of things you want to think about when you're dealing with Hydra. You want to think about what's going to help me maximize my damage or get the stats I need on my champions. And sorry guys, but sorry not sorry, get farming Ice Golem. I sure need to as well. I'm lacking here. I'm slacking, I'm lacking gear. <laughs> but I'm going to really try to be better about farming Ice Golem. I just, I don't get the pieces I'm hoping for most times. So I'm trying to be picky. It is what it is, but I don't mind. For now, I'm just moving my gear around. But yeah, I hope you guys appreciate this kind of video. Let me know in the comments below. Are any of these sets something that you didn't even think about for Hydra? Are you going to dust out your Ice Golem team? Get that dark cow going again? <laughs> Have a little fun in Ice Golem? Uh, <laughs> anyway, let me know. And I will see you guys in the next video.